Catholic University. My name's Ryan, and I'm back to go through some more questions for your Part 107 Knowledge Test. Just like last time, I'll be going through the questions to answer them as if I'm taking the test, so I will be using the testing supplement that you're given for your exam. As always, remember, for the upper right-hand corner of your test booklet, or the testing supplement they give you, make sure that matches uh, what is on your actual exam. Let's jump right into it. So, question one for today. The floor of the class Bravo is, so I'm going to go to figure 25, area 2. So I wrote that down for page 58 just so I can cheat ahead. I'm going to go all the way to page 58. Before I do that, remember, the way this book is set up, contents, it has the legends and then it has figures. It's broken up in two parts and they just go in order. So we're going to go all the way down to figure 25. Let's scroll down here. All right, figure 25. So it's asking me the shelf of the class Bravo at around area two, so around this area. So remember, class Bravo has a lot of shelves. It's specific to that airport. Uh, usually it goes up to, from the surface to 10,000 feet, right over the airport, and then it kind of goes um, higher altitudes as you get further from the airport. Imagine a plane descending in, so it's protecting that plane as it's coming in to get lower as it gets closer to that airport. So in area two, immediately I notice that we have from, it has one, one, zero, and then it has over three, zero. So that means it starts at 3,000 feet up to uh, 11,000 feet, excuse me. Also in this area, I do not see a altitude depiction, but under it, we have the Addison Airport. So in the Addison Airport, which is this dashed blue line, it says it's 3,000 with a negative sign, so negative 3,000. That's not, it doesn't go to negative 3,000 feet. It's saying that the airspace for Addison is up to, but not including 3,000 feet, meaning there's an overlying surface, or overlying airspace on top of that Addison um, area. So that tells me that this is up to 3,000 as well. So we'll go back to our question. The floor of the Class B airport is 3,000 MSL, right in this area. All right, question two. The NALF Fentress Airport is what type of airspace? So I'm going to go to figure 20, area one. Figure 20 is page 53. Oh, zoomed in. All right, we're going to go to area one. So around this area, let me zoom in here. All right, so we have area one, Fentress NALF Airport, which is what the question mentioned, and it's asking what airspace is this? So immediately I see around this airport a dashed magenta line. Remember, when it is a dashed magenta line, that means it's class echo to the surface. So it's all the way down to the, uh, to the airport level is echo airspace. Now let's just shift our eyes over to Chesapeake just to give you an example. There is no, it's the same magenta color, the airport is depicted as a magenta color, but there is no, that, none of that dashed line. That means that it is Gulf airspace here, and then it's echo further up to 700 feet. So remember, when it's that dash, it's don't get confused by this two magenta colors of how the airport is depicted. You need to look what's around the airport for that airspace. So that tells me that it is echo to the surface with this dash magenta line around here. So the answer, B, class E airspace. Next question, what does the dash magenta line east of area 6 indicate? So we're going to go to figure 20 again and look at this dash magenta line east of this side area six that's up and down right here. Um, so don't get confused with this dash magenta line. I know there's a lot of similar lines going on. But this line, if you notice, we scroll through this whole photo, it goes all the way from the top of the map all the way to the bottom. So this is a line and it also gives you an 11 degrees west. So this is for our magnetic variation, which we have right here. A magnetic variation is for um, when we're using compasses to navigate. So our maps are depicted as true north, meaning it is exactly north and south. I didn't mean to cover that photo, but I meant to use here. North and south, 
as we're going along. When we are using a compass to navigate, it doesn't account for the magnetic variation that are in compasses and depending where you are in the globe. So for example, a practical application of this, if I was at this airport for Currituck County Regional Airport, and I wanted to go to up here to Virginia Beach, that is a straight shot up north according to this map. So I'm going to go a heading of 360. However, if I was going to follow a compass, I would need to go subtract 11 degrees because we're in the Western Hemisphere. Um, so when you are going from true north to magnetic north, you need to subtract. So we, I would take away 11 degrees. Again, this is much more advanced than what you're going to need for your, uh, for your exam, but I'm just going to give you a background and a kind of a practical application to that. So instead of flying 360, I would fly a heading of 349. So it's subtracting 11 degrees from 360. And that's how I'd follow a compass to get up to this point up here. So as we go across the globe, these numbers change. Uh, on the west coast, I believe the number is 12. Uh, in other parts of the world, they're different. So it depends on where you are. All right, going. So the answer to this question is magnetic variation. Let's see, the CTAF slash Multicom frequency for Garrison Airport is, so I'm going to go to figure 21 area 2, figure 21 area 2 is page 54 right here, and I'm looking for a Garrison Airport. I have Garrison Airport right here, I see Garrison, it says 1937, that is the altitude of the airport, and let's see, it has lights with that L there. 37, 100 feet, and we have 122.9 with a C. So when you have that C that's kind of bolded, uh, that means it's the CTAF frequency. It always comes after the frequency at which uh, is the CTAF. So it's always written first, and then there's that C after it. So if there's two frequencies written, you know the CTAF one is the one that is written right before that C. So. 122.9 is your answer. All right, next question. What does the line of latitude at area 4 measure? Remember, when we talk about latitude, I'll go to figure 26 just so you have a better picture. Figure 26 is 59. So remember, when we're talking about lines of latitude, like how we had in that video, uh, my last video, we had we talked about when latitude, lat is fat. Lat is going like across the earth and it's laterally, so it's from side to side, think about it that way, which we have here as you follow my cursor, side to side. Now these are stacked up north and going south, and it's parallel to the equator. So these lines of latitude are measured with the degrees of latitude north and south from the equator. Remember, latitude is that way. Longitude is we use for the prime meridian, it's based off the prime meridian line, which is that line just over Greenwich, England. So don't get those confused. Right. Determine the latitude and longitude of Cutrick County Airport. Sorry, Currituck. Currituck. Yeah, we're gonna go Currituck. Probably Currituck. All right. Figure twenty, area three. We'll go to that. Um, Fifty-three. Do lines. All right, back to my example that I had earlier. Pretty easy. The question is, determine the approximate latitude and longitude. So we will start with, I need to find some numbers on these lines. I have a 37. Remember, 37 is with this line right above it, and that's going laterally. So that is lines of latitude. Sorry, lines of latitude. So that means it's north. We're in the northern hemisphere. So we are 37 degrees north at this line. Let's go down to the next one. We are 36 degrees north and then 30 minutes. And so if I go right in here, remember, these lines are depicted every 30 minutes. So 30 minutes, not minutes as in time, minutes as in measurement for um, your lines of latitude and longitude. So we have 37 here, so that means I have 36, 30. And then I'm just going to count down. We go. From 30 to 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. So I'm going to say that's 36, 24 degrees north. 
And now I need to find right here, see the 76, and that is going with the line that is going up and down. So that is our longitudinal line. And this is 76, if I go right down here, and it's just about over one, so I'd maybe 76 and one degree west, because we are in the western, we are west of the prime meridian line. So let's see if that answer checks out. I said we would be doing 36 degrees and 24 minutes north and 76 degrees and one minute west. So your answer here is A. I think we have one more of these. There we go. So we can practice this again. What is the approximate location, sorry, the approximate latitude and longitude of the Cooperstown Airport? We're going to go to figure 26, area 2. 26 area 2, that's right here, now again, look for area 2. So I see this Cooperstown Airport right here, again I'm going to just go across and look for a number along the latitude and longitude line. So I have a 47 here for the latitude line. Remember 47, we're going all the way up looking for the next point. This is 47 and 30 minutes. Each small dash here is one, and the slightly bigger one is five, and then the slightly bigger one than that is 10, just to make your life easier, easier on the eyes. But I'm gonna go 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Could be 25, 26. I'm gonna call that 25, just because that's right here. So I'm going to say that is I said, 47 degrees north in 25 minutes. So 47, 25. And then now let's look for, we have 98 degrees west. So I'm going to go 98, follow this line here. I know this is 5 because it's slightly bigger, and this is 10. So I'm going to say 5, 6, maybe 6 or 7. So we'll call that 98 uh, degrees and 6 minutes west. So let's see if that gets our answer. So I said we have 47 minutes, 47 degrees and 25 minutes north. And then I said 98 and 6 minutes west. So our answer here is B. All right. One more for practice. Determine the approximate latitude and longitude of Minot International Airport. Let's see, figure 21, let's see, All right, I'm looking for a Minot Airport, area one. My computer's tweaking out. All right, here we are, just up here in the top part of the map. Again, I'm looking for where these big numbers are. I have a 48 degrees for this latitude line right here. And then I know that's north, so I'm gonna go up from here. I do not see another line, so I know it's less than 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go, I see this big line here, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 maybe 16 minutes, so I'm gonna say 48 degrees and 16 minutes north, roughly. And then I'm gonna go 101 degrees and I'm gonna go over, this is 101 and 10 minutes, and this is 101 and 20, so it's between the 10 and 20, I'd say maybe 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16. So I'll say it's 101 degrees and 16 minutes west. So let's go back to our question. I said 48 degrees and 16 minutes north and 101 degrees and 16 minutes west. So our answer for this question is C. All right, I think you guys are getting the hang of it. One more just in case though, just kidding. Determine the approximate latitude and longitude of Shoshone County Airport. So I'm gonna to go to figure 22, area three. I know that is 55, right here, nice and easy. Area three, so looking for this three and I see Shoshone. 
and again looking for some lines I have 48 degrees right here I'm going to go down I see the next depicted line is 4730 so I'll zoom in to help the eyes a little bit this is one two it could be 47 uh, 32 minutes we'll call that nice and easy and then that's north so then we're going to go 116 degrees west and then we see this big line right here that's 10 so I'd maybe call that 11 so maybe 46 sorry 116 and 11 degrees to the west and 47 32 degrees north so let us try that 47 and 32 degrees north which I have here and then I have 16 degrees and 11 minutes west which I have right here so our answer right there is A alright last question for today how would a remote PIC check notams as noted in the caution box regarding the unmarked balloon so I'm gonna to go to figure 20 for this one to just give you a, a better visual figure 20 and then it said unmarked balloon so it says caution unmarked balloon <clears throat> on cable to 3,008 feet MSL so that means above sea level check notams so remember when you check notams or when you pre-flight you want to make sure that you know the weather for the area you know what air spaces you're going to be in and you know if there's anything going to be in your way that's not normally there aka you want to check those notams to do that, you would be going to your 1-800-WXBrief.com or you'd call that phone number, which is the same thing, 1-800-WXBrief, to get your weather briefing. Um, you can do it by phone. You can do it online. It's the same service. They give you the same thing. Um, I like it, doing it online because it gives you a visual of where everything is, and I think visual is huge these days uh, rather than having somebody talk to me about it. Um, but that's just a preference thing. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Enjoy.